Welcome to the study of action research. In this and other videos, we will explore the values, assumptions, and process of action research. Action research is any systematic inquiry conducted by educators, teachers, principals, school counselors, or other stakeholders. Information is gathered to gain insight, develop reflective practice, and to bring about positive change. Educators have numerous ways of solving problems. They can consult with mentors, peers, and supervisors. They can think about how they solved a similar problem in the past. They can even consult the scholarly literature for guidance. Action research is yet another way for educators to solve problems. Action research incorporates a reflective stance, which means that it prompts educators to be thoughtful about their practice, what is and is not working, and what can be done to improve. This process contributes to professionalism, as systematic problem solving using a scientific approach is deeply respected. And perhaps most importantly, action research encourages and empowers teachers by giving them the tools to solve practical problems while also contributing to theory development. In their book, All You Need to Know About Action Research, McNiff and Whitehead present a model of the action research cycle. The cycle begins with observing a situation, usually one that poses some sort of problem. Next, the action researcher reflects, what could he or she do to make the situation better? What has worked in the past? What does the literature suggest? The action researcher chooses a course of action and tries it out. Then, importantly, the action researcher evaluates the results of his or her actions. Did things improve? Were there any unintended consequences? Was the cost worth the benefit? Depending on the answers to these evaluative questions, the action researcher modifies his or her actions and continues the cycle, perhaps moving in new directions by choosing new situations or new targets to research. One neat feature of action research is that it is broadly applicable. It can and should be applied to issues of professional practice, but it can also be applied to more personal situations, such as managing conflict with colleagues or striking a more effective work-life balance. Anything can be the focus of systematic inquiry. McNiff and Whitehead also outline several assumptions of action research. They suggest that action research is value-laden and committed to moral practice. Action researchers are socially entwined in the sense that they influence the world and the world influences them. Perhaps most importantly, the primary focus of action research is on the researcher. In action research, the assumption is that knowledge is uncertain as knowledge is constantly being created through collaborations. Thus, answers are tentative. Finally, action research aims to improve educational workplaces and even society more broadly. When talking about action research, we usually differentiate between quantitative studies, which use primarily numeric data to make predictions and ultimately control outcomes, and qualitative studies, which use primarily textual and or visual data to understand a phenomenon. Both types of studies can be used in action research. The choice of which method to use depends on the researcher's goals. Furthermore, mixed method studies that incorporate both quantitative and qualitative aspects are also popular in action research. One of the major topics we'll discuss in this course is how to collect, analyze, and interpret data. However, the type of data collected is determined by the nature of the problem. Indeed, in action research, data collection methods may be idiosyncratic, unique to the action researcher. However, as a rule of thumb, qualitative data often drive action research. Quantitative data, when used, are often reported through the use of descriptive statistics. Although we will cover other ways of looking at quantitative data, note that action researchers most often use descriptive and reflective methods to present data, rather than statistical methods. After the results of data collection are interpreted, the action researcher must fo plan follow-up actions. These might include sharing their findings with others, orally and or in writing. As highlighted in the action research cycle, the researcher might take additional steps to benefit his or her practice. Most importantly, the results of action research often lead to new questions, which can be the topic of future action research studies. In his book, Educational Research and Introduction, Borg presents a table that distinguishes action research from what he calls formal behavioral research. 
Although Borg goes into more detail, the gist of the table is that action research differs from such traditional research in a number of ways, though there are many similarities as well. In action research, the primary focus is on the researcher's behaviors, what the researcher will do to try to effect change. In traditional research, the focus is on the participants, whether or not they change, how they perform, etc. In action research, the research takes place in the researcher's setting, such as the cl teacher's classroom, whereas in traditional research, the researchers come into a setting and conduct the research without being involved in other activities there. Action research can use qualitative or quantitative measures, but these are flexibly applied and can change as the research progresses. Traditional research can also use qualitative or quantitative measures, but these are more fixed, selected at the beginning of the research process. Data analysis in action research is generally descriptive, whereas data analysis in traditional research is more formal, with specific analysis techniques involved. Finally, action researchers typically focus on the implications of the results for their sample, such as their own students, and their own practice, whereas traditional researchers generally want to generalize from a sample to the larger population of people from which the sample was drawn. Be careful not to fall into the trap of believing that one type of research is better than the other, or that you have to choose one sort over the other. Educators can conduct and or be involved in both traditional and action research. Indeed, there is much overlap in the methods and process of traditional and action research. The main difference is in emphasis, as action researchers really are looking primarily at their own behavior and its consequences, whereas traditional researchers typically look at participants' behavior.